Hi guys, welcome back to another video game with the powers. I'm Jake. I'm Sierra. And welcome to what board game got back for the month of May. Uh, so May was a relatively quiet month here. Uh, I only backed two games uh, in the month of May, but there's a lot of good games in May, so it's kind of hard to narrow this list down. Uh, but today we're going to be looking at eight total games. Um, if this is your first time watching a video like this from us guys in this little series we do is um, basically I show some games from the month of that month before prior where uh, I backed a certain amount of those games. I'm going to show some of these other games to Sierra and she's going to try and guess what games I backed and what games I did not back. But all right guys so like, like I said today we got eight campaigns that we're looking at. I backed two of these so let's go ahead and jump right in and see if she can guess them correctly. All right starting off we we have Bye Bye Dice. All right, this is a card flipping dice throwing card game. This is coming to you from Comet Games. All right, and uh, the purpose here of uh, Bye Bye Dice, let me go ahead and scroll down here. Um, so the purpose of Bye Bye Dice is essentially what's going to happen is there are small little um, square uh, cards or little tiles. Uh, they're not really tiles, they're more like cards, but they have numbers on them. Okay, and the objective of the game is uh, you are going to put them all out in the middle of the table face down and you are trying to get the numbers 1 through 8 um, in sequential order as well as like what's called the winning card, alright? And how that works is you're going to take a dice, all the players are going to roll a dice one at a time, the first person that rolls a 6 is going to be the one that goes first and basically what they do is they just go into the pile, they flip over a card if it's a number that ha and it has to be in their order, so like if they don't have a one, they have to flip over cards until they get a one, then they put a one down, then they keep flipping cards. While that person is flipping cards, the rest of the players are taking turns rolling that dice, and once somebody else rolls a six, that person has to stop flipping over cards, and now it's that person's turn to start flipping over cards, okay? What's unique about the game is you have to declare um, whether you want to get cards of all of the same color or different colors. I believe it said um, somewhere in here, decide if you are going to collect different uh, colors or all color of all numbers of the same color. Okay, so you have to choose which one you want while you're trying to flip that down. And then that's kind of the rules of the game, um, a little bit of where you're trying to uh, collect all of those. Then... To add in like an even little more twist, they have special cards that they throw in as well, which do different things like stop searching, uh, buy by dice in any number, like a wild, <clears throat> excuse me, like a wild card in the game. So uh, there was only there is a couple pledges here. So the basically uh, basic pledge, one copy of the game is 16 euros, which is going to run you about 20 US dollars. Uh, you could get three copies of the game for 40 euros or they had the early bird pledge which I'm, I'm gonna be honest I missed out on that one um, that would have been for 14 euros which would have been like 18 bucks uh, so this is bye bye dice coming to you from Comet Games uh, for 16 euros or right around 20 bucks do you think I back this game um it sounds fun Sounds like a party game, which you don't get a whole lot of party games. So I don't think you backed it, but I think you should. If you, you think did. I should? <laughs> it sounds fun. Um, right. You are correct. Uh, I did not back this game. You don't do party um, games. <laughs> this was, yeah. Well, it's not really that I don't do party games. This is also one of those games that, like, I found amongst trying to search for. So, like, I didn't even know this game existed. But, Darn. Uh, all right, guys. That is Bye Bye Dice, the card flipping dice throwing card game. We'll let you know if we late back it. Yep. All right, moving on to our next Kickstarter campaign. This is called Milkman, a legacy uh, or a legendary, okay, pun on words, a dice and deliver game. This is coming to you from Dice Hat Me Games. All right. Um, and so taking a look at the project, this raised $45,000 out of a 15,000 goal. So it was fully funded and it had 1,279 backers. All right. 
So what is the purpose of Milkman? So it is the 1950s and you are a farmer, you're a local dairy farmer, and so you have cows and things like that. And so you're gonna be doing your best to manage your farm, keep these cows happy, uh, process and deliver milk, right? There's three different types of milk in the game. You have whole milk, skim milk, and chocolate milk. And so what's gonna happen is you're gonna have these house cards right here with a certain number of milk that needs to be delivered. And uh, I believe what you're going to do is you'll have your own dairy board. You got dice that you're going to roll. That's going to be like the production of your milk. You're going to get those uh, resources, get them to the trucks, and then have the trucks down the line in order to deliver uh, the milk uh, to your customers. But that is pretty much the game in a nutshell. All right, let me go ahead and scroll back up here a little bit. Taking a look at Milkman. So the pledge they had for this was 30 US dollars, okay? Um, and then they had a cream ale division or um, cream ale pledge for 35, which was the Milkman game plus one, a copy of one of their other games called Micro Brewers. All right. They had a milk stout pledge, which would give you Milkman, a copy of Home Brewers, and then a copy of Micro Brewers for free. Home Brewers is another game by them um, that they have done before. Let me scroll down here really quickly. Uh, to show you guys, I believe they had, yeah, so here's a line of some of the other games that they've created, Micro Brewers, Heartland, Bell of the Ball, uh, New Bedford, um, so that is one of those pledges, and then they had the Cappuccino Pledge, which would give you the Milkman plus a copy of Viva Java, the coffee game that they have back as well, and then we have the Coffee Milk Stout Pledge, which would give you the Milkman game, a copy of Home Brewers, one copy of Viva Java, and then the Micro Brewers game uh, for free. All right, so this is Milkman, uh, the board game coming to you from, what was it again, Dice Hate Me Games, all right? What do you think about this game? I don't think so. You do like resource mm -hmm. control games. Is that what you call them? Resource? Yeah. Something. Um, but I don't think you backed it. Um, only because looking at the names of some of the other games, I think I've heard more of those games. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you are correct. I did not back the game. Um, yeah, really, I think... This game intrigued me, it but does sound cool. but um, at the same time, it's like we do have a lot of those games with those resources and the dice rolling and things like that. And so this would be my house with all the chocolate. With all the chocolate milk. <laughs> I want all um, the chocolate milk. And so yeah, it just like you said, there's a lot of other projects this month that were actually um, a little more expensive. So being the month of May, tried to really cut back on what I backed, and so this unfortunately just got lost in the wind. All right. Might be one we get later on. Yeah. All right, guys. Moving on to the next one, Fractured Sky. All right. This is coming to you from IV Studios. Uh, this was probably the uh, Kickstarter campaign of the month. All right. Everybody was on this train. This was a massive thing. Yeah. Um, I got a lot of um, ads for it. Yeah, you got a lot of ads for it. This raised $1.1 million, 10,000 backers. And so essentially... Uh, what is Fractured Sky, okay? Um, Fractured Sky kind of puts you in the helm of a starship or a, a ship in general, and you are trying to collect resources of a fallen star. Uh, but what's so unique about the game is there's not only is it kind of like an area control, there's like a bluffing and a bidding system. And so you'll see these little mag you have these little magnetic chips that you'll get to hook underneath your ship and you will put those your ship with those chips out and when you do battle against the other people you'll kind of like release the chip and whoever has the higher number is the winner so you never know what people have um in regards to that and so then also there's like a um there's like a deduction a hint of deduction where like some of these cards will give you hints as to where you're trying to collect um what's called um, so hidden information, right? Discover hidden information that you can use for misdirection or unmitigated domination. Here's the bidding battles right here. So they have those magnetic chips that you're going to stock right underneath your little ship. Uh, you're going to build some buildings. They got resource management with these little cubes. Um, and see, there's a little magnetic thing right there of how cool is that. And so that's what really drew a lot of people in. But what I was trying to look for was they got some nice cards 
like magnetic holographic cards that came with it is these right here these star falls things i think this is what you're collecting ultimately to get like victory points and win the game and so the cards that you draw will tell you information of like where these resources are or where you can find these at and so when you look at one of these cards only you know that information so then you put it back and again it has a bluffing system where like if I go to this one location, you're like, oh, he just looked at a card. Now he's going here. That must mean that thing is there. So I want to try and go there and battle. So it has unique um, elements to that as well. But that is essentially uh, Fractured Sky in a nutshell. They had a couple different pledges here. Uh, the base pledge was starting out at 49 US dollars, which is just the base game. And the, um, in the base game, you didn't really get any of the magnetic stuff. And so that's kind of where the tough part was. If you wanted all the cool fancy stuff for $129, um, that was that pledge. And like just to give you guys a visual look at what some of that stuff was, let me scroll down here to show you what actually was coming in the pledge. They also have a solo and two player mode um, to the game. They had uh, the painted miniatures. This is the Super Deluxe Pledge for $179, so you, all of your miniatures will come pre-painted, um, so those look very good there, but this is what I was talking about. So this is the Deluxe Edition content. You will get all of these ships, the magnetic tokens, and things like that. This is the uh, $129 Pledge, okay? Um, from my understanding, in the base pledge, you will not get the magnetic stuff. You won't get these cool big player boards. You'll still get the ship miniatures, but everything else will just be cardboard tokens, okay? Um, so that's kind of the draw here is the deluxe editions and the time exclusive uh, deluxe editions as well, okay? So again, these are the people that are coming to you from Mystic Mischief, Veiled Fate, and Moonrakers, and ah, see here it said. So the retail edition, all cardboard and cards, this version is perfect for those looking for a smaller box and less imposing table presence. So instead of magnetic chips, they're just cardboard punch outs and things like that. So really, the draw here was that deluxe pledge for 129. All right, but this is uh, Fractured Sky in a nutshell. So do you think I back this game? I don't think so for two reasons. One, I kind of wonder if Porter backed it and you're just going to play his. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but two, we tend to not like a whole lot of bluffing games against yeah. each other. Um, you're right. I didn't back the game. And it was a little expensive. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're right. I didn't back the game. Oh, really, the honest thing was just the price. Um, again, I felt like... They you were, would need the deluxe. Yeah, I felt like if you wanted to get the full immersion of this game, you had to get the deluxe version. The retail version really wouldn't cut it and give you that feel of it. And so for 129 bucks, that is a hefty price. Like I said, there was a lot of hard games and other games that I was looking at that were kind of in that same price range, maybe a little cheaper. And so I just had to make a decision and this... Unfortunately, it was one of those. I'm sure it's a great game, but Porter, as far as I'm aware, I don't know if Porter backed it or not. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, really, it just came down to the price. I felt like if you wanted to get the full feel of the game, you had to buy that deluxe version. For 129 bucks. I was like, I'm going to go and bass. But you are right. I did not back the game. All right, so moving on to the next project. We have Sky Tier Horde Monoliths, all right? So Sky Tier Horde Monoliths is a expansion. Um, it's a standalone expansion to the uh, Sky Tier Horde um, card game, okay? And basically, uh, what this uh, what Sky Tier Horde is, it's a solo or co-op castle defense card battle. I got a lot of videos on our channel, guys. Go ahead and check those out. I got a review of the game up. Um, check that out if you're interested in that. But basically, it's a tower defense card battle game where you're putting cards down, playing them in lanes, okay? So what's going on in the Monolith Edition? Well, let me scroll back up and actually show you guys. Um, they're actually doing a lot of cool things for backers of Sky Tier Horde. They're giving you a brand new box, okay? They're getting rid of that magnetic box and giving me just a big giant square box with better storage options that is going to be hold, that's going to hold all the cards from Sky Tier Horde and all the cards from this Monoliths expansion, okay? And they'll be able to fit all those cards sleeved, okay? Because there's been a lot of issues with the uh, current Sky Tier Horde box where they have trouble fitting cards that are sleeved, okay? Uh, so what's coming in this actual expansion? They're going to add in new... Um, 
new matchups here, and I'll get back to the price tag in a sec. Uh, they're adding in new uh, alliance decks, so three new alliance decks plus another illusionist expansion. Well, I think that's the original one. I'm sorry. So here's the here's what's coming in Monolith. So uh, still we get three new alliance decks plus a new um, Diviners expansion. So again, um, whole new clans to mix and match with. We have new Monolith Horde decks, okay? A different way to um, other Horde decks to battle. We get a Broods expansion. Uh, we get some tokens for that. They're giving us some plastic, some new plastic tokens. They're adding in this challenge expansion, bringing in different levels now of each individual minion in the game that you're going to be battling. And then, of course, they're bringing you the Colossal expansion. So this is something that they had a plan to do in the original game is have like the final boss monster be like two cards or three cards. And so in this Colossal expansion, you'll see that this boss is actually three cards with his head, his arms, and his legs, or however you want to put it. And so you have that option to now battle all three of those things, all right? Plus, you're also getting dividers uh, designed by Tesseract. So you, you could have uh, backed and got some dividers for like $4.99 on your own. They're including that with that in here, all right? So they had a couple pledges. The pledges available to all of us, right? You had the just monolith all-in pledge, which gave you everything related to Sky Tier Horde monoliths for uh, 56 euros, which is going to be about 60 US dollars. They had the monolith returning players deluxe box and upgrade. So all returning players of Sky Tier Horde, you're going to get all the upgrades, the new boxes, plus all the monolith content for about 80 euros, around 84, 85 bucks. You had the monolith returning collector's edition. So if you wanted the collector's edition, that's going to give you like an art book, um, card sleeves, um, as on top of everything from the um, upgrade pledge. And or you can get the monolith new players deluxe version, which is going to give you all the deluxe version and components from this new campaign as well as the, uh, the play mat. And then they had the new collector's monolith edition, which is going to give you everything from the base game and this monolith collection. So that is Sky Tier Horde Monoliths. Uh, do you think I back this? Um, this one I'm torn a little bit because okay. you love this game. Yes. And it's giving you more like solo stuff, right? Yeah. And you love good good organization. Yeah. Oh, I kind of have a feeling you backed it. Mm. It's kind of expensive. A little bit. Not terribly. Mm -hmm. Ugh. I do think you're being more money conscious. I don't know. I'm torn on this one. You got me on this one. Gotcha. You got me on this one. I backed it. Haha. <laughs> okay. uh, I got with my gut. Yeah, I did back the I backed the returning players deluxe um the deluxe pledge. Again, like she said. The, there was a lot of issues with the box from the first one with storage and things like that. And so here, they're giving you a bigger box, being able to hold all of these cards. And like, I do enjoy this as a solo game. I do think this was primarily geared for as a solo game. And so that's why new storage, you're getting me some of these extra tokens that you were technically supposed to get from the first campaign that they never, they never gave us. And so I'm getting that. And then again, like I'm getting this um, colossal expansion, getting those monsters. I think that's so cool as well. But again, yes, I do enjoy this game for solo. Uh, we really tried it one time as co-op, but I think we never really brought it to the table other than that. Um, uh, we would, though. I yeah. would play that one again. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, more content, more combinations, different things like that. And so I enjoy Sky Terror Horde Monolith. So that is... What you got? I'm Come. gonna give myself a, a half a point for that one. Okay, all right. <laughs> so I'm three and a half out of four. All right, guys, moving on to the next one. We have Lindy Hop the Card Game. Uh, so this is a cooperative card game for two people about swing dancing, all right? Uh, this is gonna be a short and sweet one here. So Lindy, Ca Lindy Hop is a card game about the dance that originated in 1928 in Harlem, New York City. Um, it, has, it, it has since evolved 
and to be an enthusiast around the world. And so basically uh, how the game is going to work is it is a card game where you are going to have all of these different cards out on the table and you are going to have like a little meeple that's going to be dancing across all of these cards just like this and you're trying to get them from one end of the one end of the floor all the way to the other by playing cards and matching them up to get the required points and so again you're doing this all cooperatively um, to be able to do this so it looks like a nice little cute little short little card game that's cooperative um, for two people all right uh, so they had a print and play version which is probably about five bucks us usd they had a physical copy of the actual game for 35 dollars new zealand which is right around 21 dollars and then they had, um, you know, you could pick this up in Auckland, New Zealand instead. And they had different just pickup options. But that is pretty much the game in a nutshell. The print and play version for $5 or the physical copy for right around $21. This is Lindy Hop the Hard Game coming to you from Flat Cap Games. You didn't back it. And you're correct, I did. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't sound bad. I think you probably just found it. Yeah, yeah. you're right. I just found this one. You're correct. I did not back this one. It's interesting. <laughs> All right, moving on to the next one, guys. This is number six. Uh, we have Papillion Gardens. This is a Stampin' Right game about creating your own butterfly garden. Okay, is this it is Papillion or Papillon. Papillon. I don't know. Papil Papillion. I, don't know. I saw Papillion. I, don't... I know it means butterfly. Yep. But... This is coming to you from Colossal Games. All right. Uh, this raised 11,000 out of the 10,000 goal, so just barely funded with 245 backers. So what is the goal of Papillion Gardens? Again, like I said, this is a stamp and write game. Uh, 30 minutes, one, two. Stamp. It's a stamp. Yes, you will be stamping um, things on there. So I like um, you are returning to the garden once more with a stamp and write. So gardeners will hone their green thumb designing the best garden. You will make your mark by stamping flowers, attracting critters, and building special features all to attract butterflies and score the most beautiful garden. So you're going to use stamps to plant uh, vibrant flowers in your gardens. You'll plant and build your garden your way with a variety of tiles. Every game presents a unique challenge and design with accessibility in mind. So what you'll do is you'll be selecting a combination of garden cards and die to add to your garden. Then you're going to take your nice little stamps and you will stamp them out on your sheet as such. And so they had a couple looks at. So yeah, so you'll have your little stamps. You'll have the ink from the for the stamps and you'll go ahead and put it out there. So they had two different pledges here. They had the base pledge for 20 bucks and then they had the deluxe edition which uh, the difference is the deluxe edition is going to give you these nice deluxe wooden stamps instead of just generic um, flower stamps like these. So instead of these small ones, you get these nice um, deluxe one. But that is Papillion um, in a nutshell, a nice stamp and write game about building your own garden. Um, base pledge 20, deluxe edition uh, 35. So do you think I backed this game? I don't think you backed it, but you are going to for the $35. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> <All right. laughs> yeah. Uh, so I did not back this game. Um, this one, like I actually had saved for a while and I planned to back it, but um, I forgot it because like I leave it in my save projects area and then like sometimes I get notifications and you can turn those notifications off and like I just forgot about that it was like 24 hours left to go. And then it just went by and I forgot to back it. So I'll definitely late pledge. Uh, <laughs> oh, you better be able to late pledge the deluxe. Yeah. I want the cute little... Papillion garden. Yeah, the stamps. Stamp right. I, we I, like rolling rights a lot. I figured you would enjoy um, this game. I would enjoy that game. I like flowery and... <laughs> Butterfly game. All right, so we are down to seven and eight. So as always, I'm gonna show her both seven and eight, and then she's gonna make her guess. That was also how I knew you didn't back it. Yeah, <laughs> as to uh, as to which one is going to be the winner. So starting off, we have Weirwood Manor. All right, this is a one to five. Yeah. Weird Wood Manor. This is a one to five player co-op adventure of strategy and time where you are battling evil monsters. So you know me, I love my nice little cooperative games. And so how it's gonna work guys is you are gonna have a, uh, you're gonna pick a person and then you're gonna have a little deck of cards and you and your other teammates are gonna be working together uh, to defeat a bad guy, all right? But what's cool is this little board, the board will rotate 
um, around the, the room. There's rooms and stuff on the board as we go through. So like a different take on co-op that still allows for individual choice and progression. Improve your character as you see fit during the game. Um, there's a lot of replayability, the unique theme and mechanics. So actions in the game take away precious time. Players have to make hard choices about how to play actions in the time they take. Um, tracking that time on the main game, uh, the board affects how they move through the manor. And so the manor itself will move in the, uh, in the board as the board will change. And so it's very hard. You can't expect to go into one room um, at a time. So basically, like I said, what you're going to do is you're going to be playing your actions together at the time of day. You're going to update the time of day on the board by moving different things on the board. You'll be trying to match icons, accessing different rooms, performing these actions, and just collecting resources, battle dice, things like that. Your typical cooperative game where you're working together to try and defeat a big bad monster before you run out of time. Okay, that is Weirwood Manor in a nutshell. Uh, the base pledge here was 82 Canadian dollars, which is right around 60 USD. All right. They had the deluxe edition pledge for 85 USD. And then they had the family. They had a bunch of other pledges like a family pledge where you could get the game. And then on top of that, you would get um, like a story app to go with the game. They had the retailer pledge, the early bird pledge. Uh, the Reader's Pledge, which would give you a book about Weirwood Man Weird Wood Manor um, <laughs> as well. But this is Weird Wood Manor, a one to five player cooperative game of strategy and time battling evil monsters in Minion with an ever shifting magical mirror. All right. More manor. Manor, yeah. <laughs> All right, so taking a look at the next game, this is Terror Escape, the immersive horror board game for two to four players, guys. All right. And so basically, the premise of Terror Escape is you, uh, one person is going to be playing a killer and the other people are going to be playing the survivors. This is a one versus many hidden movement game. And so what's really unique about this game, guys, is that you have this nice little mansion cardboard punch out that's splitting the board in two. And as I continue to talk about the game and scroll through it, scroll through the game so you can kind of see what it has, um, you'll be able to see that. So Again, they have uh, the killers. They have different killers. It's really this gives you vibes of if you guys have ever played uh, Dead by Daylight, right? Where one person. I was gonna say it sounded like that. Oh uh, yeah. That so, that's the video game you. Play. Yeah, that's the yeah. video game. So it really has that vibe. Um, right here, we're looking at some expansion killers. So the werewolf and the huntress for the first one. The second expansion, you have some unidentified creature. You have this plant-looking thing, kind of maybe from Stranger Things. Mm -hmm. Um, and the third expansion is the Immortals, all right? Lethal Immortals. Lethal Immortals, all right? And so you got some survivors, your generic survivors that each are going to have a different job and being good at something. And then the third expansion will bring you another survivor. So this is kind of what I was talking about, where the mansion separates it from uh, two sides. And again, one side the survivors, the other side is the killer. So the killer have, will have no information about the game. And then the survivors will get to know where the killer is at all times. And so basically that is this game in a nutshell. The survivors are, there's two ways I believe the survivors can escape. I remember is you go to this room up here, which is called the radio room. And you have to take an action to repair the radio. But you got to be careful because you got to roll a dice or something. Or because you can make a noise. Then I know you're in there and I'll go there. Or, the yeah, the killer. You have the killer, yeah. Um, then, or instead of doing that, you can search, there'll be like a deck of cards like that you can searching, right? The searching deck here. Um, you're trying to look for five keys. And once you find all five keys, you go out the mansion front door and you have escaped as well. So those are the two ways to escape. And the killer, his objective is obviously to take out and kill uh, the survivors. But the mansion is the base map. The expansions are giving you um, other maps like a cabin a laboratory in a castle, all right? You got things like dice. Oh, uh, the, the cool thing is uh, it comes like this. This uh, little thing serves a purpose, right? It's just not there for anything. So this is a dice tower, right? This is where you're going to put your survivor cards to see their health status so everybody can see it. This is where you're going to put your keys, and this is the round counter for the rescue. Like when you repair the radio, I think you're kind of like calling the police. And so you have to survive five rounds before the police get to the mansion and break the door down. All right. That is Terror Escape in a nutshell. The horror 
uh, one versus many hidden movement game, all right? So here they basically had uh, a couple options. They had the base game for 75 US dollars. They had the gameplay all in for 139 US dollars. They had the deluxe all in for 249. That basically the deluxe all in is going to give you all the expansions plus this giant box plus play mats of all of the maps, um, everything like that. So all the expansion, they're going to give you deluxe art books, things like that. And then they had the early bird gameplay, which was $129. All right. So we are down to the final two. So one of these games I backed, we have Terrascape right here, or we have the cooperative game Weirdwood Manor. Which one do you think I backed? Mm, um, I think I'm leaning towards Weirdwood Manor because it's a co-op. And the last time we played a one verse mini game, <laughs> we got in a fight. <laughs> <laughs> um, and this seems a little bit like that babysitter and uh, Boogeyman. Boogeyman game, which is fun. So I do think this sounds really cool and interesting. But I'm going to say you back to Weirdwood Manor. Uh, no. Darn. I, wow. I backed Terror Escape. Um, so, click on Terry's game. Um, so she is right. So expensive. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, this one was, this one was pretty expensive, but my hope, she is right. Um, we really have not had a good experience with one versus many games. Uh, but doing a lot, I did a, before I backed this because, and I did back the all in, okay? Uh, not, not the deluxe one. I did, uh, <laughs> I did the, this one. Uh, so... I missed out on the early bird, and then so I did this gameplay all in. So just the gameplay, um, yeah. So I did a lot of research on this one, and from what it seemed like was most hidden movement games, um, like for example, the one we play a lot is Jaws. Is one side always has a no matter what or who's playing it will always have a distinct advantage. Over the others. And yeah. so like with you play Jaws, don't be the shark. Yes, the you shark will always lose. lose. Here, when I looked all the research and all the videos, the consensus was no side really had a distinct advantage. It was back and forth, up and down, and it was determined more on the player. But what's really cool is this is the first hidden movement game where the killer was the one who didn't know a lot of information and the survivors knew all of the information. So like I said, I don't know where you're at if I'm playing the killer, but you will have my miniature and I have to announce to you where I'm going. So like I'm moving here, I'm moving here, and I'm moving here. So you are going to have way more information than me and so you can try and go around and dodge around me I'm the one that has to deduce where you're at as the killer. And so I thought that was a little more exciting. And then, again, my hope with this is I can see this game having a lot of potential. This is what I was hoping the Dead by Daylight game would be, but it's not. Dead and, by Daylight game? Yeah, so they actually made a game Dead by Daylight. Oh, um, interesting. So this is what I was hoping the Dead by Daylight game would be like. And so this is going to be kind of our, my final test with us in one versus many um, type games to see if we're going to like this or not. But um, I just felt like, yeah, I just felt like I'm, I'm crossing my fingers here hoping that we really enjoy this game or hoping this is a game that, you know, if we have some friends over that we can enjoy with this as well and having all of the, uh, having all of the killers um, is going to have a lot of variety be, variety because they all play in different ways. And so it changes the game up. That's what really attracted me to it is I think this game does have a lot of potential. It is just like, it, this is more like Dead by Daylight than the actual Dead by Daylight board game is. This is like, just like Dead by yeah, Daylight. Yeah, that's what I said. Like, what? this is more of the Dead by Daylight game. Than Even, the, what, what is this person called in Dead by Daylight? The one with the trap. Yeah. Is um, it called the Huntress? Uh, no, I, it might be. Um, I know she's got like the pig mask or whatever, but yeah, so I think 
yeah, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much why I backed the game. I'm really, I'm taking a chance, crossing my fingers here, um, hoping that we can like this game. And I think that, I'm, I'm hoping that we'll enjoy this. And, and from what it seemed like was that it's it's good at two players as well as... That's what I was wondering. So, yeah, so they said if you're playing at two players, the person who's playing the survivors is going to have to play three survivors. I figured that. But... Like I said, they didn't make it complex because the the goal of the survivors either is to go to that certain room and repair the radio or search the rooms. Like when you're in a room, you can search from that search deck to find keys. So other than that, you're just moving around the board. So it's not super complex. You know, like most games when you're having to play multiple characters, those characters do different things and have special powers and things like that. Like... Yes, these characters have a little bit of a special power, but it's not something that is completely overwhelming. So you're just trying to move around the board. And so that's what a lot of people say. This is very accessible for two players, accessible as three players and four players as well. And like, it kind of does give you that battleship type feel of where like the screen is split and we're basically playing battleship amongst the three of us. So again, I'm crossing my fingers. I'm hoping this can be something um, if it's not, um, I do feel like this game has generated a lot of buzz. Um, like if you go back up, it raised like $6 million in HK. Yeah, so $6.1 million in HK, 5000 back. I think that equals out to around, over like close to a million. I would guess, like. Close to, I think it's like eight, seven hundred fifty thousand, eight hundred thousand, maybe somewhere in there. I do feel like this game. Um, there's been a lot of buzz about this game. There's been a a lot of garner to the game, and I do feel like when it comes out, we're we'll definitely try it out. And if we don't like it in the first couple months, I can sell this game and get the value and get my money back because I feel like this is gonna be a game that's gonna be hot for like three or four months once this come out because of how unique. And how it plays, but too bad it's not delivered till November. Yeah, I know. they gotta get here for Halloween. I know. Yep, that is Terror Escape, the board game. All right, guys. Well, this is board game got back for May. As you can see, only back two games, but one of them, both were pretty expensive. So that's why there was only two games that were backed uh, this month. All right, guys, go ahead and drop a like on this video. Help us out. Leave a comment if you like any of these games or if you backed any of these games as well. And as always, please subscribe if you are not subscribed to our channel so we can keep bringing you more awesome content. Y'all have a great one. Bye. Bye.